Good evening, you're watching the news. I'm Kavita Krishnan. Farmers in Telangana are all set to contest the Lok Sabha elections against Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Yes, you heard it right. 50 farmers from Nizamabad plan to contest from the Varanasi constituency in an attempt to highlight their demands and make their voices heard. They plan to file their nomination two days after Narendra Modi does. पिछले दो महीने से हम आरबोर के किसान लोग हल्दी और जवार के किसान लोग हमारे फसल को सही दाम लगा के हमारा राज्य सरकारी खरीदने के लिए हम लोग ये आंदोलन शुरू किया था मगर अपना राज्य सरकार की तरह से हमारे तरफ आग खोल के भी नहीं देखा और हमारा जो समस्या है उसको सॉल्व करने का कुछ कोशिश ही नहीं किया किसान लोग डिसाइड किया कि हम लोग अपन हर एक गांव से पांच पांच नामनेशन डालना निजामबाद सांसद के लिए डाले तो ये गवर्नमेंट को अपना जो समस्या है वो अपना राज्य सरकार के बाद भी पूरा भारत की सरकार के जितने भी राज्य और सब राज्य में अपना समस्या सबको मालूम होता वो सॉल्व होने को and uh, that was what you heard from one of the distraught uh, farmers of uh, Telangana. Now, uh, just to give you a bit of a background, these farmers had also contested the Lok Sabha elections from uh, Nizamabad. And now they plan uh, to file nominations in Varanasi. In fact, uh, they have uh, started a Chalo Banaras uh, movement even as we speak. Now, we will... Be I'm joined by my uh, colleague, uh, Paul, uh, from uh, Hyderabad. Uh, Paul, uh, tell us more about uh, the uh, distress that these farmers are going through. Why is it that, you know, they are abandoning their farms and getting into the heat and dust of politics? Well, Kavita, they basically have very few demands. One is that they need a turmeric board to be set up. Most of the farmers who deal with turmeric, who plant turmeric, are from the Telangana region or from the Tamil Nadu region. So they're saying they need a board to speak up about the issues concerning uh, turmeric farmers. Also, red jowar uh, farmers are also in the same category. They're saying that they need a minimum support price. It's easy for a government to say that uh, 1,000 rupees should be the MSB. But at the ground level, are the farmers getting a minimum support price for their crop is the big question. And that is exactly what they are fighting about. In fact, it was on the 11th of April that uh, Telangana went to polls from Nizambad constituency, the same constituency where Kavita, the daughter of K. Chandrasekhar Rao, the chief minister of Telangana, contested. We saw one 75 odd farmers leaving their farms like you pointed out uh, and going and uh, nominating themselves contesting against Kavita only to make a point and this particular story Kavita was covered by every media house they succeeded in sending across a strong message that they are not going to take it lying down they want to send a message to the center saying uh, we are up in arms we want a turmeric board it's a very small demand uh, that comes from them considering they're not getting the minimum support price they're saying that they need a board to speak up the issues that concerns turmeric farmers Kavita has spoken about this in the parliament several times She's an MP representing Nizambad constituency, but she says the centre hasn't done anything. What farmers are saying is, we don't care who it is at the centre, we don't care who is raising our issues or not, we need a board, we need a solution. So now, as part two of that initiative, they are starting a campaign called as Chalo Varanasi, 50 farmers from Nizambad and several others, another 50 we are hearing from Tamil Nadu, all together, they will be travelling to Varanasi, no, victory is not what they're looking for. They want to send across a strong message. They will be contesting from the Prime Minister's constituency, saying our demands need to be fulfilled, our issues need to be looked into, and we will contest. They don't have money, they don't have power, they don't have anything. In fact, they're going to an area that they don't even know, they don't know the language. There, These Telugu farmers will be going all the way to Varanasi to make a point that they will contest against the Prime Minister. They need their demands to be fulfilled. Right, uh, Paul, in fact, uh, farmer distress is something that we've seen across the board, across the country. And we've seen a lot of anger amongst farmers. A lot of it had spilt over onto the streets. There were farmer protests in state after state that we saw uh, over the last uh, year, year and a half. Uh, tell us the situation in uh, Telangana.
Well, that's right. Mirror now has exclusively covered uh, several of these protests regarding farmers. In fact, Telangana, we've seen several farmer suicides taking place. Uh, now it is reduced to a large extent because of uh, the regulation of power supply and water uh, after KCR came to power. But still, there are several issues, especially this particular district of Nizambad. They have a lot of turmeric farmers. And this particular protest is by the turmeric farmers as well as farmers who, de who deal with red jowar. So they are saying very simple things, like I pointed out before, right. they need a turmeric uh, board. Paul, uh, if, I might, if, if I might, if I might interrupt you over there, do and stay with us. Do stay with us. We have uh, Daiva Sigamani, who is a president of the All India Turmeric Farmers Association. Uh, Mr. Sigamani, uh, Daiva Sigamani, if you could tell us how many of uh, your uh, farmers, how many of you are going to Banaras uh, to, uh, you know, fight elections, and uh, what actually prompted you to think that? this would be a better way to address your problems? From Tamil Nadu, for 40 farmers filed the nomination, filing the nomination. Telangana, 6 zero, 60 farmers filing the nomination against Modi at Varanasi constituency. But the Modi's government is totally against the farming policy. He is always against the farmers. His policy is destroyed the farm, farming economy. In Tamil Nadu, 381 farmers suicide. But the Delhi government is not care about that. The, the Modi Sarkar not increasing the farmers' income. In. The turmeric price is always going to down. Turmeric uh, farmers are also suffer, but the Modi government is only for the corporate, not the weaker section, not the farmers. So we, our feeling must come to the national wide propaganda. So we filed the nomination against Modi. Modi should not continue the prime minister. If he continues the uh, continues the prime minister, the na nation may be. So exclusively, farmers may be, farmers' life destroyed. Right. Uh, Mr. Daiva Sigamani, I, I want to ask you one more question, but we also have another caller on the line. Sunil is on the line. Uh, Sunil, very quickly, uh, what is your question? Uh, well, I, this is my view. Uh, these, uh, by just contesting an election, I don't think that the problem can be sorted out. Okay, and uh, last uh, election where uh, Kavita has uh, contested, in that election, the evening uh, uh, result was, I mean, the polling result, I mean, to say that. Polling, uh, uh, they said that some percentage, and after the very next day, it came, uh, they came to know that some plus 14% has increased. How it is possible? These are nothing but... Uh, the people are simply, uh, I mean, the politicians are simply making buffoons, actually. And these are the uh, stunts and nothing. Right. Sunil is calling it a stunt. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Daiva Sigamani, uh, the question here is, how will this solve your problem? You were very clear. You told us that you all are not really looking uh, for a victory. You all are sending a message over here to the uh, Prime Minister and uh, to, the, uh, to the MPs from your state. But how is this going to solve your problem, you getting into politics? So we are not a politician. We are farmers. A lot of problems we will meet. Every day we may meet a lot of problems. The government should clear all. The government saves the farmers and the weaker section. The government has no idea to develop the farmers' community. But he give more importance to the Anil Ambani or Ambani's like this. Right. So the loan is always um, uh, always breaking the farmer's economics. The loan must, the complete loan by is very essential today. But Modi didn't say anybody in the uh, election manifesto about the loan by. Right. We suffer. So we come to file and uh, uh, Brahmananda to against the BJP. 
Right. Uh, Mr. Daiva Sigamani, I request you to stay with us. We are also joined by Narendra Tanija, who is uh, the national spokesperson of the BJP. Mr. Tanija, thank you for taking time out. Uh, we are joined here by a farmer leader and uh, the story that we are actually discussing this evening is the fact that over 100 farmers, 40 farmers from Tamil Nadu, 60 farmers from Telangana are now planning to travel all the way to Banaras. Now, this is a city they have not, never been to, they do not belong to, they do not know about. They are travelling all the way to Varanasi just to file nominations to fight against the Prime Minister in the Lok Sabha elections. Now, they feel that this is the only way left, the only recourse they have to ensure their voices are heard. Mr. Taneja. No, but uh, uh, we, uh, we have nothing to say. I mean, if they want to fight election from wherever for the reasons that they know and if everything is done, uh, you know, in accordance with the law, we have nothing to say. I mean, tomorrow you are anchor, you go and fight. It's, uh, all Indians are, uh, you know, within their right to go wherever they want, fight election, whether against X, Y or, the, you know, the prime minister or some other leader or Rahul Gandhiji and others. So uh, I mean, uh, we have no we have no comment to offer on this. Mr. Taneja, thank you for quoting the Constitution to us. Uh, we know we are well within our rights to fight elections. The question that I'm asking you here is that here are farmers who should ideally be tilling their fields, who should be in their fields working on their crop. They have decided that we do not have a government who's listening to us or answering our or listening to our demands, listening to our issues, which is why we have to fight elections. Isn't that clear indicator of the kind of distress that our farmers are in? No, as he said, it is there. You know, we have done enough for the farmers. We are doing a lot for the farmers. And agriculture, as it is a state subject, but if some people want to make a political point or they have some, you know, their own way of looking at things, and uh, uh, then it's up to them. I mean, if they are from Tamil Nadu, they should go to the chief minister of Tamil Nadu. If they're from Andhra, because agriculture is a state subject. Since you said you are very well versed the Constitution, I'm sure you know that as well, that agriculture is a state subject, essentially and first and foremost. But from the centre, we have done the maximum possible and we plan to do even more. You know, agriculture distress, farmers distress, uh, uh, transformation of, uh, you know, rural economy, that's very, very top priority for us from the centre. And we are helping various state governments, all the state governments, to do the maximum possible. From the centre, whatever we can do, we are doing it. But essentially, as you know it, since you said you are very well versed the Constitution, right. that agriculture is a state subject. Right. Uh, Mr. Tanija, uh, I understand agriculture is a state subject, uh, but you'd also promised to double farmers' income. Let me take what you just said to uh, Mr. Daiva Sigamani, who is with us on the phone line. Uh, Mr. Daiva Sigamani, Mr. Narendra Tanija over here is very clearly saying that farmers over here are making a political point and so that the government has done enough for farmers. Once again, I say we are not a politician. But the government, the government must save the farmers. In the election manifesto 1914, the last Lok Sabha election, BJP mentioned the double income, or the raise the income of farmers. Where, 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 where gone the income? Why the uh, suicide uh, counting is going to increase? In Tamil Nadu, water problem. The, the agriculture is not... Uh, is, uh, they he explained, agriculture is a safe subject. But why in one of the minister, cabinet minister in general, what he will do? What, is, uh, uh, what are they doing? Right. They... Right, Mr. Tanija, do you have any answers? No, I think I can. I, I listen to him very carefully. You see, as I said, our, our party, our government, we are very concerned about all these issues, and we are actually doing the maximum possible, and we plan to do even more. But as I said, that you know, the water problem or uh, the issues that you know, the uh, you know, my co-panelist is uh, talking about, these are essentially state subjects. They must talk with their state and ask their state to interact with the with the central government, and ask, so that the state government can ask. And we promise that we will do the maximum possible for the state that uh, you know the gentleman is referring to. That's how it works under the constitution. 
Right. Let me let me go across to my colleague uh, Paul. Uh, Paul, if you could give us a sense of how bad is the situation in uh, Telangana as far as uh, farming and farmers are concerned. Well, Kavita, we have reported about several farmer suicides from the state of Telangana. An MSP minimum support price has been a burning issue for a very long time. Like I said, it's easy for the government to go ahead and say, we are ensuring MSP is implemented. But at the ground level, if you go deep into the villages of Telangana, you would be surprised that farmers don't get the minimum support price that has been promised. It looks very fancy on the on the papers, but at the ground level, they don't get what they even spend on on harvesting their crops. So that is what they're saying. There are not one, but several issues of the turmeric board, uh, term turmeric farmers and the red jowar farmers, especially in Nizambad, like I pointed out, a huge belt of turmeric farmers exists. So they need a board, they need their issues to be looked into. And that is why this fight, it's more of a symbolic fight. It's not that they are politicians like Deva Sigmani was pointing out. It is a symbolic fight. The message needs to be sent across. The message needs to be sent across. Uh, we are also joined uh, uh, by uh, Chengal Reddy, who is a farmer activist. Uh, Mr. Chengal Reddy, thank you for taking time out. Uh, you are obviously aware of the fact that farmers from Tamil Nadu, from Telangana, are traveling all the way to Banaras to file their nominations against uh, PM Modi. This is not the first Lok Sabha election that they are uh, contesting, though. Tell us what, what would it take to get a farmer out of his field and to go and actually contest elections. Why would a farmer do that? That is, uh, shows that uh, the desperate situation of farmers uh, virtually across the country for almost every crop. See, here in Telangana and Karnataka, I'm sorry, Telangana, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh, India, we grow a lot of spices. Now, this demand has been there for almost 20, 30 years. And the Telangana government itself has made a number of representations. Now, I didn't find what is the difficulty for Mr. Modi to constitute a commodity board, as simple as that, constitute a board, have some officers, experts, ask them to study about the, because basically what boards do is they, uh, they, they look into the productivity patterns, because if there is excess production, there is a problem. And then they also look into value addition. They will also study the export potential. See, boards are an advisory board to for particular commodities. Now, Mr. Modi has never bothered to look into that. Now, what has happened done by Telangana and Tamil Nadu farmers is an example for the days to come. And this will be followed by every farmer across the country. See, Mr. Modi somehow has lost credibility with all the farmers. See, if you look into oil seeds and edible oils, right. Mr. Modi has been importing a lot of edible oils. Even though India produces huge quantities, there is no procurement. There is a distress sale both in Gujarat, Rajasthan, and other places. But still they are going on. See, government of India, especially after Mr. Modi came, he has started in a way... Right. Right. He has betrayed farmers. He has betrayed farmers. Right, Mr. Chengal Reddy. Uh, he has betrayed farmers, is what Mr. Reddy has to say. Uh, at the end, like Mr. Chengal Reddy just pointed out, desperate times call for desperate measures. And it is a clear sign of desperation uh, that our farmers are now sending out to the government. They are contesting elections. This is not what they are supposed to do. This is not what they want to do. They are doing this to send a message out to the politicians of the country and it is not just the current government it is also all the state governments it is also all the political parties that are contesting the elections and they are being very clear about it they are saying nobody is listening to us it is time for us to now get out and fight elections if that is all it takes for us to be heard so be it we will do so that is the reason you will see 100 farmers 60 of them from uh, uh, Telangana, 40 of them from Tamil Nadu travel all the way to Banaras to fight elections against the Prime Minister of India. Time for all the parties to take note. And that's a wrap on the show.